Hello and welcome to November's Asset Flip. If you don't know what this show is about, I take the free assets given to us via Marketplace on Unreal Engine and using just those assets, I try to create a small prototype of a game all within about six hours. So let's take a look at what we were given this month. But this month we were given the character appearance and dissolving materials, uh, cloudscape seasons, a modular industrial area, an asset cleaner, project cleaning management tool, and an ArchViz interactive UI and tools. Now out of these ones, I can tell you that this month was difficult because of the, just the selection we got given, not all were useful in what we wanted to try and do this time. However, we did try some of them out. So what we're going to do is go through each of these and talk about how they were used in this project. So after experimenting around with the various types of assets we got this month, um, I explored what I could do with it and I settled on the idea of making a shooting type gallery game, sort of like Time Crisis or Virtua Cop. And I wanted to use this level pack to let us navigate around it and shoot enemies that appear around corners. So I wanted to try something really different gameplay wise. Now here I'm trying out the Cloudscape sessions uh, seasons pack, but I, I just couldn't get my head around getting it working straight out of the box. It, and everything I was doing to it wasn't actually making it look any better than the built in atmospheric system or in Unreal. So I just carried on using that one instead. Now, as you can see, I went around the map to explore and see what I had on offer. And I started work on the gunplay for this. Now, one thing I wanted from the gun was that the player would not move. They would just be moved by the computer, but the player would just move their mouse to turn the gun. So the gun needs to be on a sort of swivel, move around and aim where the mouse cursor is pointing. This took a bit of trial and error to get it feeling just right and making sure the bullets were firing in the correct direction. But eventually we got there. The next thing I wanted to do was set up the points of where the player needs to run to. These points and locations in the map would be markers and set up by a manager. So there's a manager class there that has got a track of all the different points in the order that the player has to go visit them. And each of those points is then tracking also who, which enemies are spawning to. So I'll set up various spawn points for enemies too, which you'll see here, where they would come in and follow a spline based on this uh, spline mesh, uh, spline tool sorry, that we've got in our actor. I made it have a little default mannequin just so I could see a preview of where it was starting. Made it a lot easier for me to uh, see that, uh, but I made it hidden in the game for obvious reasons. We don't want to see a giant red mannequin ghost standing right there. But it would, on the timer, would spawn an enemy in this location. And the spawning would be handled by the manager class, which is looking at all these spawners and deciding which one should get an enemy spawned. And the spawning of enemies was based all on a timeline too, so we put everything onto a sequencer inside an actor. Uh, however, this was very cumbersome. I wanted to try something out with the sequencer and see if we could use it to do something like this, but it turned out to be very difficult. And I wish I just stuck with the timeline uh, that is far more uh, feature rich and actually more stable for what we actually wanted to achieve. So the main issue I had with the timeline in the sequence at all is that it was fine for one point but as soon as I wanted to put in other points changing or manipulating them per instance was pretty difficult if not impossible so it made it very difficult to make it work for other points I wanted to say have more enemies spawn on than other ones. I had to do a workaround where I slid the keyframes before the start of the animation so therefore it never actually fires them. Bit of a messy solution but it works.
So we've got the dissolve effect working on these enemies so that when they were shot and killed, they would dissolve away. That wasn't too bad to put on there and it's quite a nice effect and there's plenty of options there for it too. I was quite happy with the d dissolving effect there was there. Um, and I just look forward to trying to use it with things that weren't just mannequins as well going in the future. And the last thing we added to the game was this point system so that when you hit enemies they would see numbers fly off them and also tally the score up in the corner of the screen keeping track of your high score very much in an arcade like fashion. And here is the finished product and I'll push play and check it out. So our character will auto walk to a position and these will spawn and I will kill them and it will move me on to the next bit. So you get that shooting gallery type gameplay quite easily set up. Making use of that dissolve feature there to make it look like the enemies are dissolving away after they've been killed. Now obviously an evolution of this idea is to have enemies shooting back at you, uh, throwing stuff at you, whatever it may be, uh, just to add some extra variety to your game. So overall, how did I find this month's offerings? Well, I like the environment was piece. They had quite nice uh, materials, quite nice assets that could easily be adjusted, changed and reused again for different types of projects. So I'm quite happy with what we got there. I tried using the Cloudscape Seasons pack thing, but I just couldn't get it into the engine too well into my level. Um, it just, the appearance of it just didn't work too greatly better than the one that comes with the engine anyway. So I just used that instead. And after that I went on to use the asset pack tool where I would use it to clean up the project. However I came across a problem with that and it involved looking at the help documentation but every time you clicked on the link to go to the help documentation it would give me a 404 error. So I never actually got around to actually being able to use it. Uh, so that was a bit disappointing as something like that would have been a great time saver in other projects that I've put together. So overall this month was quite a hard month to make something out of what we've got. So I'm looking forward to see what we get in December. I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you're subscribed for more tutorials and videos such as this every single week. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.